Mercedes and Roma saved the best for last. The last playoff spot in Class 4A was up for grabs, and this one went down into overtime. And in overtime, Mercedes scores and then keeps Roma from scoring, and that's all she wrote. Mercedes overcomes a tremendous amount of injuries they suffered in the early part of the season to get the final playoff spot in 32-4A. Mike Uribe bringing his team back to the playoffs one more time. I'm already thinking about our opponent. They're gonna, we're going to be playing Cal next week. Uh, we'll, 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 what's going to be here, we'll determine the details on the date and time, but it will be here. Uh, and uh, they're a top team in the state of Texas, so we, we're, we're there to, to play hard. We're not there to lay down for anybody. So check it out. Here is the playoffs. It's Cal Allen at Mercedes, 7.30 on Friday. As a matter of fact, three out of the four Valley teams get home games against the Coastal Bend. Alice will be at Westlaco East in Division I. Kingsville King at Ed Couch Elsa on Friday. The only team that's traveling, Rio Grande City, will go to Flower Bluff and play at Hornet Stadium on Friday. But now we talk about the playoffs. And Mercedes, my gosh, how unlucky can this team get to make the playoffs year after year after year and face Cal Allen every single time, Greg. Yeah, it's been tough. I mean, that, and that team is really good this year. But here's the deal. That's not a really good year up there in 4A in that Coastal Bend, Corpus True. area. It hasn't been a great year for us, but we got some home games. I wouldn't be surprised if we held our own. And there have been years where it was like three or four blowouts right off the bat. I think we have a chance to win some games out of that district. Well, let's talk about Ed Couch Elsa as long as we're going through that district. I mean, they you know, they fall behind against Wesleyco East, but then they come back this last week, and the passing game was great against Mission Veterans. Which team do you think we'll see against Kingsville coming up this week, Jake? Well, I think you're seeing a combination. I, I, I don't think that the, the competition with Mission Vets, because Mission Vets is a very injured team, uh, that you know they didn't have their full complement. So it, it wasn't a great measuring stick for Ed Calchelsa, especially after the Westlake East game. I think what we're going to see is a, uh, a well-balanced Ed Calchelsa team. Well, I mean, we talk about Ed Calchelsa. We talked about Mercedes having to play Cal Allen year after year. Uh, I don't think anybody here thinks that Ed Calchelsa will not beat Kingsville, but in the next round, that second round, it's Port Lavaca, Calhoun, and the Sand Crabs one more time, and it seems like these two teams always meet up every year. Yeah, and this, this is the team from Ed Calchelsa that wants to kind of take a step further. They want to keep getting better. They took their lumps as sophomores. They're starting still. They lost out on the district title, but I think now they realize they can make things right by winning in the playoffs and, and getting back to it. I think last week was a good thing to kind of get their mojo back. Similar thing happened last year with Mission Veterans where they lost a late season game and then were able to uh, excel in the playoffs. I like Ed Couch also to do the same thing and hopefully for them they can get that uh, revenge because there's uh, <laughs> definitely reason to get that. Right. After, after I the think the summer. Sand Crab team though might even be better than last year's Greg but on the other side Wessico East seems to have a little easier road maybe. Well you know PLC was a team that beat Cal Allen. Yeah. 27 to 7 so those are two really good teams and a bunch of chumps if you want to know the truth. Uh, yeah, East has a good shot. East is going to have either uh, Victoria East or San Antonio Jefferson. That is if they win their by-district game against Alice. I think we're looking at East in the third round for sure. And, I mean, this is a, a historic year for East. I mean, their very first ever all-district title all alone uh, between Wessico East and, and uh, Rio Grande City. Jake, uh, how, do you, how do you like the chances of these teams to advance? And how, how do you think Rio Grande City will be able to do on the road? Well, I think it's going to be difficult for them. I mean, really, I mean, they haven't played, uh, you know, their best game at the end of the year. I, I really think that, you know, and, but they had more, they've had the, be the best competition of their season and towards the end also playing at Cal Chelsea. I think they'll do well. Um, you know, it's going to be that factor of playing on the road, especially in the Corpus area. You know, right. things don't always go well for us in that area. So, <laughs> so you know, I think they're going to have to overcome that. But I think they'll do fine if they can weather the first the, the first quarter storm that usually comes up there. Yeah, I think we can maybe get three out of four in these four A's. Well, Flower Bluff, you know, they've played a tough schedule. They've played San Benito, they played Sherry Lane, they played a bunch of teams that are quality. They, they have about a 500 record, but they have some athletes. Rio just got to play. You know, they're there. They got to get the ball to Oviedo right. and let Daryl Lopez pound the ball. They, they got a shot, man. I'd like to see them take it. 